bring you to Auburn, Alabama, where these Tiger fans are still savoring that great upset win at Texas A&M. Bob Rathbun, Tim Couch, a pleasure to have you with us tonight. Tim, that really was some win. <laughs> it was a great win on the road in the SEC against a very good football team. A big stepping stone for Gus Malzahn in year one of his program. The question is, can they get emotionally ready to get off to a fast start here tonight against Florida Atlantic? And nobody knows that better than the head coach. He's standing down on the field with Elizabeth Morrow. Coach, an emotional, hard-fought win last weekend over Texas A&M. You said as a coach, sometimes you worry how your team will respond. A tough practice on Tuesday. After that, how are things? Yeah, our guys have really got after it. Uh, felt like they finished the week right. Uh, I think we're in the right frame of mind. You know, we've been working on getting better each week. It's another challenge. You also said that you didn't think so many teams could respond to the success that you have had. What did you mean by that? Well, just every week these guys have answered the challenge. And uh, so we got another challenge tonight. Can we come off a big emotional win and play good football against a good team? The trademark of Auburn has always been physical, hard-nosed football. You have this team back to playing that way. And with that, both of your lines are playing outstanding. But what have you seen out of your offensive line? Well, we're getting there. I mean, uh, you know, we worked on getting our edge back. we got to be physical tonight. we got to be able to run the football. we got to be able to stop the run. If we do those two things, I feel pretty good. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. And control of the line of scrimmage, of course, is a trademark for success in the SEC. And that's what Auburn has done this year. They really have. We all know about the three great running backs they have here and Nick Marshall running the football from the quarterback position. But you don't run the ball for 300 yards a game and lead the SEC unless you're dominant up front on that offensive line. They're led by their center, Reese Dismuse. Over the last several weeks, this has been one of the best offensive lines in the entire country. And the defensive line is coming into its own. They really are. You win in this league in the trenches on both sides of the ball. Run the football, stop the run. This D-line is the strength of this defense right now. They're getting better and better each week. They're putting constant pressure on the quarterback. Last week they took down a very mobile quarterback in Johnny Manziel. It's going to be another tough test here tonight against the mobile Jacquez Johnson. The starting front four racking up all kinds of sacks and tackles for losses as this Auburn team finds itself now ranked 11th in the nation. From the flagpole tonight, Spirits is ready to take flight and we get ready for football on the plane. SEC College Football is presented by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Here come the Tigers. season unfolding here on the plains and tonight's opponents from the sunny climes of South Florida near Boca Raton it's Florida Atlantic representing Conference USA and their head coach Carl Polini a Florida Atlantic team that comes to Auburn with two wins this season the three hard luck defeats 58 degrees it will get a lot chillier than that before we're done tonight the wind is a zephyr, clear skies. It feels, Tim Couch, like football weather, partner. Finally football weather, and this is one of those great nights where the weather's perfect. You feel like you can run all night. The humidity's gone, and the perfect night for football here at Auburn. Mitch Anderson will kick it away. Auburn won the toss, and they've elected to receive. Tell me, Tyler. SEC College Football Saturday is underway from Jordan Hare. It's going to be Quan Brand to the 22-yard line. One of the great stories in the SEC, the development of this man, quarterback Nick Marshall, our Toyota Auburn starting quarterback. You know, it really has been fun to watch the progression of Nick Marshall week to week, how he's improving in this offense. He's starting to really feel comfortable in what Gus Malzahn is asking him to do within the offense. He's getting really good at running that zone read that Auburn wants to run so much. And he's become a weapon not only in the passing game, but in the run game as well. Marshall will keep it. 
A big chunk of yardage out to the 35, and an immediate 15-yard gain. And he's been doing that over the last several weeks. These running backs get so much attention out there in the back there in the backfield because of how effective they've been, and Big Marshall's been able to have a nice feel for when to pull that ball and when to give it. See his rushing statistics. Mason goes out of bounds. Approaching the 40 yard line, Trey Mason leads the team in rushing yards, fourth of the SEC. As he has rushed for nearly 700 yards coming into the campaign. And you look, Tim, at what they're getting per yard. They are one of eight teams in the country. They're averaging six yards every time they run the ball. On the delay. Nick breaks one tackle right up the middle. 30 25, and he is hauled down inside the 20. Three Marshall on the carry. 46 yards for Nick Marshall. Marshall did a nice job of being patient. The defensive line for Florida Atlantic that time, they all get up the field, and Marshall, the offensive line for Auburn, just pushes them by, and Marshall has a huge running lane. And we come back live for Trey Mason as he takes it down to the 12 yard line. Good tackle by number 17, Damian Park. Second down. Marshall on the give, Mason on the carry. Inside the 10. To about the 8-yard line. Well, we've talked about and heard from Coach Malzahn about control of the line of scrimmage. And physically, it seems to be a mismatch coming in in terms of size and strength and speed. And Auburn having its way, rushing the football to start the evening. continues to dominate at the line of scrimmage. They're blowing people off the line of scrimmage, and Trey Mason, one of those three backs who's a very powerful run runner, has a great nose to find the end zone. Trey Mason's eighth rushing touchdown. Cody Parkey out of the Ryan White hole. Tacks on the PAT. 12.57 to play, opening quarter, and Trey Mason making quick work of Florida Atlantic. Exactly what they want to do on this opening drive. Nick Marshall getting some big runs in the run game, and then Trey Mason finishes this drive off in a very powerful run. Great pad level that he runs with at 5'10", 205 pounds, but he gets behind those pads, and he's able to finish a lot of runs. Mason carried it four times on the touchdown drive. Overall, just a couple of minutes off the clock and 78 yards. Mason with the touchdown. But you pointed it out, Tim, this offensive line, which is just playing so well as a unit and individually, setting the tone and establishing their presence right away. And I think that's really important, the way they were able to get out on that first drive and, and do what they do. Marshall running the football, that offensive line, allowed them to come off and fire off that line of scrimmage and blow this uh, Florida Atlantic defense off the ball and allow these playmakers in the backfield to make plays. This is what we're talking about in terms of the height and weight. Yeah, and it's going to be something to keep an eye on as this football game goes on. 306 pounds against 243 pounds. This Auburn offensive line just leaning on that D-line against Florida Atlantic. It's going to take a toll as the game goes on. Touchback. Trayvon LeBlanc the was the deep man. The the and the Owls will come out from their own 25. And their Toyota starting quarterback is a sophomore from Starkville, Mississippi, Jacquez Johnson. Jacquez Johnson is a big physical quarterback. He was splitting time at the beginning of the season with Greg Hankerson, the backup quarterback. But now over the last couple of weeks, Jacquez has been the full-time guy on the offensive side of the ball, and this offense has really took off. And he runs the zone read very well, but tonight he's going to have to hit some big plays down the field and challenge this Auburn secondary. Throw 
to the 30 yard line. And slot man Dan, Dan McKinney. Johnson is complete. Let's take a look at our key defensive performers for Auburn. D. Ford, Robinson, Therese. He's become a star at that star position. And Chris Davis, who just made the first tackle, starting quarterback. Second and five. There's a play. Matt Austin heads our crew tonight. Offside, defense number 90, five-yard penalty, still second down. Gabe Wright a bit premature. Yeah, and a good job of using the snap count that time by Jacquez Johnson. Anytime you have a defensive line as active and they get off the ball the way that Auburn does, you have to use your snap count and allow them to, and don't allow them to get off on the ball as quickly as they want to. Penalty gives... Florida Atlantic game first down from the 36. Hand off to Wallace. Uh, Jonathan Wallace, their senior running back. With his first carry, team's leading rusher with 508 yards per game. And he has been their most consistent running back this season. Picks up six. Picked up by Auburn. Taken by Whitehead. And out of bounds. Jermaine Whitehead. Oh, look what I see. <laughs> As that was coughed up by Jonathan Wallace. And an easy fumble recovery for Whitehead. Uh, that's a tough break for Florida Atlantic and Jonathan Wallace. They're having some success early in this football game on the ground. And not sure who that was that was able to come in there and get a hand on that football and strip it. But Whitehead, right place, right time to recover the cover the ball and put Auburn's offense back out on the field in great field position. And that field position is at the FAU 43. First from the 43. Grant. See ya. The speedster from Opelika during that corner, 43-yard touchdown run for the former track star, the two-time Alabama 100-meter champ. The seats aren't warm yet, and it's 14 nothing. 11:24 <laughs> to go, opening quarter from Auburn, and the Tigers hitting early and often. Hot Tides are back in Atlanta. Time for a Coors Light game break, and the action takes us to number five South Carolina, number five Missouri, taking on 21 South Carolina. And Marcus Murphy, that's Jadavion Clowney going down to the ground there, takes it in for a touchdown. Seven nothing early, Tigers. Guys, back to you. 14 nothing here, number 11 Auburn, with the early lead. 11:24 to go in the first. Our Z Max. Performance play for Mr. Grant. Well, it was a great job of blocking by that offensive line. The left guard, Alex Cozen, pulls around and leads the way for Corey Grant. And Grant's the guy they want to get the football to out on the edge. He's the speedster, the track star. And once he hits that corner, there's no one going to catch Corey Grant. Grant with his fourth rushing touchdown. And he came into the game averaging. 10 yards a carry, <laughs> and when you touch it for the first time and get 43, that average is bound to go up. It's bound to go up, and he's bound to get more carries. Rhett Lashley, the offensive coordinator, we asked him about getting these back some more carries. Trey Mason has gotten the, the uh, load of the carry so far this season, but they want to get the football more to Artis Payne and especially Corey Grant, who's a big play threat in this offense. And the touchback will bring it out to the 25-yard line. 
Carl Pellini's Owls, two wins and five defeats. This is his second year as the head coach down at Florida Atlantic. Well, let's take a look at the Ford keys to the game. Well, success on first down. They were having that before they fumbled on that opening drive. They can't get behind the chains in third and long situations because that's when Auburn's going to put their ears back and come after the quarterback. And Auburn, defensively, it's dominate on the line of scrimmage. It's been their strength lately over the last couple weeks. They're going to have to stop this zone read from Florida Atlantic tonight. Carry to the 31 for Jonathan Wallace. Tackled by number eight, A senior at 6'1, 210. Second down five. They use him also as a receiver out of the backfield. Not a lot of flash and pizzazz out of the Florida Atlantic offense. No, it's really not. And you kind of, you know, you watch film on them and you kind of get a good feel for what they're going to do. It's a lot of the zone read with Jacquez Johnson, uh, Johnson and Jonathan Wallace. They like to throw the football to their tight ends. And when they take their shots down the field, William Dukes has been their big play guy this season. To the 35-yard line for Wallace. Wallace the ball carrier. Florida Atlantic played Miami and East Carolina on the road early in the season. Blown out in those two. This is the first year for the program in Conference USA. Then they got a win at South Florida, 28 to 10, their first ever victory over the Bulls. On third and short, it is going to be a first down for Florida Atlantic. The Owls then lost to Middle Tennessee. That game was in overtime. They lost to Rice 18-14. They were up nine with six to go in that game. One at UAB. Then two weeks ago, their last game against Marshall, the Herd with a field goal as time expired. And Marshall won 24-23. So that two and five is a bit misleading. First throw of the night. This one is dropped. Or is it? Now they're going to call the receiver down or an Johnson incomplete pass at the 41-yard line. Chris Davis coming up on the play. And so let's take one more look. Johnson trying to get the football in there to William Dukes. He was covered tightly by number 11, Chris Davis, on that play. But so far, I've been impressed with the offensive line for Florida Atlantic. They've been able to run the football. They're having that success on first down that's been uh, going to be key for them throughout the night. That time they get the incompletion. Got to get something positive here on second and long. And Wallace, once again, running straight ahead. Takes it up to the... 40-yard line. Very interesting story on the background of Jonathan Wallace. Elizabeth Morrow has more. Well, that's right, Bob. Out of high school, he started his career at Ellsworth Community College in Iowa, transferred to FAU 2011 as a walk-on, was cut, but he decided that he wanted to still play on the scout team. Let's fast forward to 2012. He ended up coming on to the team, and he led the Owls in rushing. He scored six touchdowns. Last year at the end of the year banquet in December, he was rewarded with a scholarship. Something Coach Bellini told us earlier during this week he never asked for, but it is something that he earned. And he's got 32 yards to his credit to start tonight's game. There's a run. The flags will stop this, and the clock expired on Florida Atlantic. Turn to snap. Of game. Offense number 12. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Jacquez Johnson in this Florida Atlantic offense. You have to operate a little bit quicker. You're in a manageable, very manageable situation on a third down and five, and you just have to pay attention to that play clock. This crowd noise is really loud. They're trying to get things communicated at the line of scrimmage, but you just have to speed up the process, a little bit more sense of urgency out of that offense. Auburn's defense has allowed teams to complete just 34% on third down conversions. 
And a great defensive play by Davis. Look at him reach around and knock that pass away. Well, that was a great play by Chris Davis that time. I thought that D Ford was almost offsides on the beginning of that play, but they're trying to run the skinny post to Dukes again, and Chris Davis is right in his hip pocket. I'm sorry, they're trying to get that football that time to Nixon or Billis. They're tied in. They line him up out wide. Very versatile guy, but great coverage by Chris Davis. Chris jumps back into punt formation. Sean Kelly is the man who will put it away. He's a very talented kicker. 41 yards, and he's had 17 of his punts land inside the 20. Look at him drive Davis back over the shoulder. Comes out of the end zone at the 10 and up the sideline. One man to beat. That man brings it down at the 28-yard line. Let's see. He went about <laughs> 110 yards he north did. and south. He sure did. <laughs> he had to backpedal 30 to get it. Yeah. Well, he makes a great play on third down to knock the ball away, and then he goes back and fields this punt and probably shouldn't have fielded. He goes back and catches it in his own end zone, but when you do that, you, you know you have to make a play or the coaches are going to probably yell at you, so he gets it, he gets down the sideline, picks up some great blocking on that play, by by the way, also, and, and sets Auburn offense up once again on a short field. Marshall. <laughs> and Marshall won that contact <laughs> with the DJ Smith. Yeah, he did, but I don't think Gus Malzahn's going to like that very much. Your quarterback running that football, you go ahead and you pick up big yardage, go ahead and step out of bounds. It was a, he finished, he was able to finish that run and, and get the best of that hit, but you probably don't want him taking too many of those. Marshall, 68 yards to the base and up the middle. And Trey carries the pile over the 15 to about the 13. You just have to be impressed, no matter the level of the competition, with the way Auburn can run the football. It's really impressive, and they've done it not only here tonight, but against very good competition in the SEC. 300 yards a night on the ground for this Auburn offense. This offensive line is really fun to watch. They're so well coached by their offensive line coach, J.B. Grimes. Everyone playing great assignment football up front. Time it's Grant as we check the Ford keys Corey to the Grant game the for the Tiger offense, the FAU defense. Well, for Auburn, it's get, get off to a board. fast get start, and they've done that so far, so good. Two quick touchdowns in the first quarter of this football game for Florida Atlantic on defense. I think they have to load up the box, bring some of those safeties down, trust your corners on the outside, and force Nick Marshall in this passing game to beat you. Out of the shotgun, Nick will keep it. To the outside, touchdown. Walks in untouched. You can follow the fullback 35, Jay Prash. Jay Prash, he gets the block. He sells that edge for Nick Marshall. He's kind of a do-it-all guy for him, for, for this Auburn offense. They like to throw him the football. He's a great lead blocker. And Nick Marshall finishes that drive with, a, with another Auburn touchdown. Nick's fifth rushing touchdown. Auburn has yet to throw a pass. Parkey adds the point. And this offense is just running roughshod over Florida Atlantic. 21-0. SEC College Football is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors, Frost Brood Coors Light, Regions Bank, and Ram Trucks. War Eagle. 21-0. Tigers on top, 654. And maybe checking that shoulder just a bit. For Nick Marshall after that hit out of bounds up the near side. All right, that was that hit with uh, DeJon Smith on, out on the sideline, right on that shoulder as he lowers it and takes that contact. You just got to step out of bounds there if you're Nick Marshall. There's no reason to take that contact. You don't, you're don't. you trying to limit the amount of hits that you take, and you don't need to take one there. Another kick out of the end zone this time. And another touchback. 
Well, we'll keep an eye and dispatch Elizabeth to find out the latest on Nick Marshall. Of course, they have the a great backup, their quarterback of the future, true freshman Jeremy Johnson, waiting in the wings. Auburn has yet to throw a pass. 149 rushing yards. And a carry to about the 27 yard line. And this carry is Jay Warren. He is a true freshman who is getting more snaps as the season unfolds. And a new quarterback, Greg Hankerson, is in. All right, Hankerson, a freshman also. He's got a big arm. He can get it down the field. You got to think he's in the game to try to get some passes down the field and stress this Auburn secondary. Swing it to the outside. And McKinney. And out of bounds, past the yard to gain line. First down at the 37-yard line, a nine-yard pickup. McKinney's a guy that they want to get him the football out on the perimeter. He has running back skills, as you can see, after the catch. So a guy they want to get out in space and force Auburn to make a tough tackle. Well, his 32 receptions lead the team. And a grab to the near side. And William Dukes. Junior from Fort Lauderdale, pushed out by Jonathan Minson. Here's Duke's numbers. He's caught four touchdown passes. Second on the club behind McKinney in receiving. Inside handoff to Warren. And Auburn shutting that down. It will be third and short. A Florida Atlantic offense that's converted 44% of its third downs this season. The Carpolini's club has been troubled by turnovers all season long. They have lost now eight fumbles and have had eight passes intercepted this season. They're minus five for the year in giveaway takeaway. This one way over the head of William Dukes. So Hankerson showing the arm, but an uncatchable ball by Dukes. And Jonathan Bitsy was there to defend. And once again, Florida Atlantic not able to convert in these manageable situations. You get a third and short situation. You got a slant route called with William Dukes. He probably had leverage that time on Jonathan Minson. You just have to get the football down, give him something he can catch. John Kelly's first punt, 63 yards, but Chris Davis took it back close to 60 officially. Davis runs up, makes the catch, and is knocked down at the 16. Let's see if everybody's okay. Florida Atlantic with Freedom Whitfield getting down on special teams, and he may have gotten the worst of it. The Auburn medical staff, the Florida Atlantic medical staff, rushing to see on the condition of Freedom Whitfield. Back at Auburn, the injured player is Florida Atlantic backup linebacker playing on special teams, Freedom Whitfield. 6'2 sophomore as he applied the hit on Davis. And you could tell immediately the contact with the crown of the helmet. Yeah, both guys feeling that hit at the end of that play. They're both laying on the ground, and you just hope that Freedom Whitfield is okay. The medical staff is going to get the the board to remove him from the field and get him checked just as soon as possible. But Coach Pellini taking over his player. 
And this capacity crowd here at Auburn wishing and hoping for nothing but the best for Freedom Whitfield. one of the toughest things that we have to witness in college football. But a lot of folks are concerned, particularly back home in Boca Raton and in Fort Pierce, where Freedom is from. And all the players, of course, in spirit come together at times like this. Yeah, no question. It's a brotherhood down there. And no matter if it's a guy on the other team or not, the Auburn players are out on the field. They're all concerned as well. You see the look in their eye, and they all re they all realize that it could be me laying there, you know, one play. And uh, so they, they all respect each, each other and, uh, and hoping Freedom Whitfield is okay. And you could go back just a few years ago to Zach Etheridge for Auburn and what he went right. through. I mean, this is a – this brings back a lot of memories here. At Jordan Hare. Almost a little bit of a helmet to helmet. The crown of the helmet of Whitfield hits Davis. And, you know, that's one of those scary plays. A lot of these type of injuries do happen on special teams. You know, it's the both guys just have the big running go, and it's just all that momentum and speed built up, and it's a big time collision. The concern etched on everyone's face. And Coach Polini heads back toward the FAU sideline. The injury, of course, is the toughest part here, but now the second toughest part is trying to get his team back playing again, knowing that uh, one of their teammates is in uh, some danger. Yeah, it's a, a very tough thing to do for both sides is to go after a break like this and seeing a guy laying on the field is to get emotionally fired back up and to play a football game, especially those guys on the defensive side of Florida Atlantic. That's one of their brothers out there, and obviously their concern is, is with him and his well-being, and it's, it's hard to get emotionally and mentally ready to get back into this football game. The gentleman standing next to Matt Austin, the referee, mm -hmm. is the noted Dr. James Andrews, who has performed so many miracles for athletes yeah, I mean, over the decades. Very familiar with Dr. Andrews. He's done yep. a couple surgeries on my shoulder, and he's a well-renowned guy, and whoever one goes to see when they have a bad injury in the, in the NFL. Comforting to see him yeah, on that sideline. It is. Darius Glanton, Brandon Bryant, the FAU teammates coming over as Freedom Whitfield leaves the stadium. Thumbs up. Always good to see. Yes, it is. We will show two more hits for the benefit of the replay officials here Person in the press box. And now we resume our first quarter. Marshall stays in the quarterback. And Artis Payne with his first carry and a load to bring down at the 35-yard line. Cameron Artis Payne. 
it's just very tough on any defense, much less this Florida Atlantic defense, to see these guys rotating in and out at running back one is just as good as the other. A 19-yard pickup down to the outside and Ricardo Lewis. And Auburn, of course, working its no huddle and hurry up to the line of scrimmage offense, second and eight. Hit and taken down for a loss on the play. Martin Wright, the defensive end, a senior from Miami, who's their speed rush guy off the corner, right, with good pursuit. That was a great job that time by Martin Wright. As you said, Bob, he's their speed guy, their rush guy on third downs. They like to get in the pass rush, but that time he played the run extremely well. He kept contained out there on the on the edge and didn't allow the running back to turn up the turn the corner. In the middle, it comes to Marcus Davis. To the 45. And it appears that they have the first down. Yes. First and 10, 11 yard pickup. Great block that time. The tackle. And great block that time by the left tackle, Greg Robinson, getting out in space, getting a guy on the ground, and allowing Marcus Davis to pick up that first down. Marshall. Hemmed in, needs a block, can't get one, runs into his own man, and it's out of bounds. At about the 47-yard line. Good pursuit that time from the Florida Atlantic defense. It was Martin Wright once again stringing that thing out. That's what you want to do when you get a mobile quarterback like Nick Marshall. He's trying to cut up, turn that thing north and south. You want to string him to the sideline and use that boundary as an extra defender. Approaching the three-minute mark of the opening quarter. Florida Atlantic doing a good job of containing Cam. It was a great job that time. Trevin Coley, that defensive tackle position, he blew it up and got the, running, got the offensive lineman forced back into the face of Cameron Art Spain, and there was nowhere to go. Coley, a sophomore who's come up with 23 tackles at his defensive tackle spot this season. Auburn clicking along it. 45% on third down this season. They have one here, but look at that great pursuit. Randell Johnson coming through to make the play. Randell, Randell Johnson's a guy they like to get on the edge on third down situations, and you can see he just crashes down and runs it down from behind. He's a speed guy, one of their best players on the defensive side of the ball, and forces a punt finally from Auburn. Stephen Clark gets to punt one. Look at that. Inside the 10 at the 8. Boy, what a talent. Stephen Clark has had only four punts returned all season. Last year, he punted the ball 70 times. Only five were returned. <laughs> it's a weapon. So the Owls will take over at their own nine-yard line officially. And they're trailing by three touchdowns with a buck 47 left in the first. Jack Wes Johnson back at quarterback. Swing it to McKinney. And right there to take him down. Jonathan Jones, Jonathan Jones. Jonathan, the man who made that tackle. He does a great job of fighting off the block of William Dukes that time, and that's the key. If you can get that initial block, allow the wide receiver to sidestep that first defender, you got to play that time, but that time Jonathan Jones fought through the block and got the receiver down for a loss of one. Tigers got Jones back last week. At Texas a and missed Western Carolina and had that awful ankle break. Right when camp began, this one knocked down and incomplete. William Justin Dukes had it in his hands and then sort of was trying to grasp it. He ended up batting it down to the turf. 
third down. Jonathan Jones, good coverage on the outside. Once third again, down. they're trying to, it was press coverage on the outside. They're trying to get it to their speed guy, William Dukes, but Jonathan Jones all over him that time, and he arrived as soon as the football did. Pressure. Johnson will run. And a strong run will not get him the first out. He's going to be shy by about a half a yard. That's what Jacquez Johnson, Johnson brings you at the quarterback position. Pressure right in his face. He's able to sidestep it. He'll get a spin move and fight for extra yardage. He's 230 pounds and not afraid of contact. And you can see at the end of that play, he wasn't able to get enough for the first down, but at least got his punter some room to get that football out of here. Sean Kelly, the punter, a former walk-on. And Chris Davis, who's already had a big night in the return game, back on his own 35. First quarter coming to an end. And now we have a penalty flag for a delayed game, so that's going to back up special teams. About five yards here for FAU. That stops the clock with 13 seconds left in the quarter. Auburn has enjoyed outstanding field position tonight. This one toward the sideline and out of bounds. And we will see where it is marked. Twenty-one to nothing, Auburn. Seven seconds remaining here in our first quarter. A thirty-five-yard punt. Persons at Auburn from the forty-eight. Down the jet sweep. Look at him fly around that corner. Number 24 Grant on the cover. With the Wildcat that time, they had Cameron Artis Payne lined up as the Wildcat quarterback, and here comes Corey Again, Grant in on speed motion. They get him on the edge of that Florida Atlantic defense quickly. End of the first. 11th in the country. And the Auburn Tigers demonstrating that great rushing ability. Lead 21-0. SEC College Football is brought to you in part by Hyundai. Academy Sports and Outdoors. Frost Brewed Coors Light. And Husqvarna. Gus Malzahn and the Tigers are looking at back-to-back -back SEC road games after this one at Arkansas, at Tennessee. Lead this one 21 nothing as we start the second. Bob Rathbun, Tim Couch, Elizabeth Morrow with you from Jordan Hare. Teams switch ends. Nick Marshall and company operate inside the 35. Dave Mason back there with him. And Mason to the outside. To the 28 as we check out. Florida Atlantic's Toyota defensive standout. Brandon Bryant, we've called his name, along with uh, Darius Glanton tonight. Glanton, a guy all number over five. the field. And Smith is number two in the country in passes defended this season. Auburn has thrown but one pass in the game. Marshall is going to go down this time trying to throw a second pass. And Florida Atlantic gets the sack. And that is Robinson Eugene, number 59. And Nick is down. Marshall suffered a little bit of a shoulder injury, it appeared, on a hit in the first quarter. And he was snowed under big time 
on this play. He was. Florida Atlantic brought the blitz, and it was initially a Darius Blanton number four coming off the edge, and Marshall was able to make him miss. But 59, Robinson Eugene, Eugene was there to clean him up, and you wonder what's going on with Nick Marshall. Looks like maybe possibly the breath was knocked out of him or something, but he's, he's trying to get up, and hopefully it's not that shoulder. So warming up quickly in front of the bench is Jeremy Johnson. And he may have to come in from the bullpen here. Yes, there is Jeremy. When Nick was dinged up a couple of weeks ago, Johnson played the entire game in that route of Western Carolina right. and was the SEC Freshman of the Week. He played a great game in that game against Western Carolina. He was 17 for 21. He threw four touchdown passes in that football game. He's a guy that they want to work into this offense more and more, and they've created some packages for him. They were going to get in, into this football game tonight anyway. They just didn't want to have to get him in under these circumstances with Nick Marshall going down. throw is a beauty touchdown Auburn Sammy Coates let's just jump right into it Jeremy Johnson <laughs> Jeremy Johnson coming in cold off the sideline he's at the top of the screen and it's just a go route on Reggie Brown Reggie Brown was in press coverage he didn't get his hands on him at the line of scrimmage he allowed Sammy Coates a free release and it was just off to the races Sammy Coates one of the fastest players on this Auburn offense and a nice pitch and catch from Jeremy Johnson to Sammy Coates that's a good play swing it to Sammy <laughs> yes, it is Extra point good, 28-0. Jeremy Johnson with his fifth touchdown pass, and Coates catches his third. Hot times are with a game break here in Missouri, number five in the country. They knock off Georgia, Florida, looking to make it three ranked opponents in a row. Matty Mock out of his own end zone hooks up with LaDamian Washington, 96 yards for the touchdown. Tigers up 14 nothing, two minutes before half. Welcome back to Auburn. Will they lead 28 to nothing over FAU? And I just watched as Nick Marshall left to go into the locker room in visible pain. It was his right shoulder. I will have a report when the trainers come out, but he did crack a smile and have a left little arm fist pump when he saw Johnson score that touchdown. Pretty cool to watch. On the sack, Tim, it looked mm. like they drove him down on that right shoulder. Right. Yeah, and that's, that's what kind of what I was talking about. That's the, un, the the hit that he took earlier against Smith on the sideline uh -huh. when he had the big run, an unnecessary hit for a quarterback. And you learn that as a young quarterback. That that's one thing you have to learn is to slide or get out of bounds because you're going to take enough hits throughout the game and throughout the season. You just don't have, you just can't take the unnecessary ones. And if you don't learn it at this level, you will definitely <laughs> learn it at the next level. Very quickly. Very quickly. will be returned. About the 18-yard line by LeBlanc. The tackle by number 16. FAU. We'll take over there. Early second quarter here at Jordan-Hare. 28-0 Auburn in a game that except for the Marshall injury has gone according to script for the Tigers. It really has. They wanted to obviously wanted to come out here and run the football tonight, and they've been able to do that. They've only thrown two passes. One of them was Jeremy Johnson on that last play, his first pass of the game that goes for a touchdown. But, I mean, they're just getting huge chunks of yardage in the run game. Marshall, 73 yards, and Corey Grant's averaging 20 yards a carry in this football game. Johnson will keep. Slipped as he made that cut out to the 23-yard line. As a runner this year, Jacquez Johnson has carried the ball nearly 100 times, 96, 346 yards, five touchdowns. Yeah, the second leading rusher on this football team. He gets better and better each week. It, when he was first inserted into the lineup as a starter, he had a little bit of an issue with that zone read of when to pull it and when to run, and, but now he's getting much more comfortable with it and starting to get some big gains. De Leon, the tight end, came over to set up, but it's an inside handoff to the 25. Mm -hmm. Jake Holland. Jake Holland. 
led the tacklers on Jonathan Wallace. Third down two. Third and two. FAU one of four on third downs this evening. Loading up that box. Holland is up. Now he backpedaled, drops into coverage, and the hit makes it an incomplete. Going for the tight, the uh, wide receiver, Jensen Stoshak. And Chris Davis was there to defend. Another pass breakup from Chris Davis that time. Stoshak actually was open on the play, had enough yardage for a first down, but Johnson delivered that football high, and that's what allowed Chris Davis to come in and get his hand on that football. Davis, who goes back deep, he's been injured here the last couple of years. As the coaches were pointing out in our meetings yesterday to us, Tim, he has been a big-time playmaker this season. He has. It's good to see him having a big game here tonight. He struggled last week, obviously, against Mike Evans at Texas A&M, but he's made some big plays early in this football game. This one out of bounds. Auburn takes over at their own 22 when we return. Out of bounds at the 22. The 53 yards. Twenty-eight nothing. Auburn leads Florida Atlantic early in the second period here tonight at Jordan Hare. The SEC Gridiron Live Greatest Player Tournament is down to the Elite Eight. You can help choose the greatest SEC player of all time by going to FoxSportsSouth.com each week to vote for your favorite. And then watch Gridiron Live Wednesdays at 10 to see who is number one. I am personally disappointed in this tournament. I programmed my computer to vote for Tim Couch every five seconds, and you still didn't get out of the first round. I needed some more people to do that, obviously. But I lost to Darren McFadden in the first round, but I don't think it would have made much of a difference if I would have won because I would have had to face Bo Jackson in the second round. So I was going to be a short timer in that tournament. They stacked it against you. They did. Talk to the producer. Artist pain. My goodness. Cameron Artis Payne just continue to rip off huge chunks of yardage every time they run the football. Cameron Artis Payne lined up a quarterback in that wildcat position just like he is here on this one. But great job by the center, Reese Dismukes, and the right guard, Chad Slate, on that last play. 35 yard gain the first time. That out of the Wildcat takes it out to the 42, picks up a couple of yards here. You know, we were looking over the Auburn stats, Tim. And for Mason and Artis Payne, they have combined, carried the ball 178 times this season coming in. They've had only five negative carries all season combined. Right. Yeah, that's an unbelievable stat. Credit to both of those guys and credit to that offensive line. Johnson keeps it. That out of bounds at the 43. Damian Parms is credited with the tackle. Third and nine. Another beautifully thrown ball, but this one is short of Coates and incomplete. Johnson's pass intended for Sammy Coates. Incomplete. That time they weren't going to leave Sammy Coates one on one on the outside. They were in man coverage across the board that time, and they tried to get it to Sammy again on the deep route. But Smith and also safety number 17, Damian Parms, came over to double team Coates on that play. Stephen Clark is the punter. And it will be a fair catch at the 15. Timeout on the Plains, Auburn 28, FAU nothing. The fair catch is made at the 15. SEC College Football Saturday from beautiful Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, 28 nothing. The Tigers on top after the win, now number 11 in the latest BCS standings. And in control of their own fate, 
when they get back into conference play next week. Two home, two road for Auburn. Iron Bowl here to wrap it up with Alabama. That may very well be with the SEC West. Throw comes to the sideline and incomplete. Davis defending and a late flag comes the flying in. There's a flag. Dan McKinney was trying to angle up to make the catch and they may have nabbed Davis for interference. Yeah, I think that's going to be the case. Pass interference. Defense number 11. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, Davis was in great position initially on the route. He was hip for hip with the wide receiver, but watch at the end of the play. He continues to get into the chest of the wide receiver, and anytime the ball is a little bit underthrown and McKinney tries to come back to the ball and go up for it, Davis continued to run through him and didn't get his head around and ran into the chest of the wide receiver, and that's what caused the pass interference. Over the middle this time. And McKinney takes it to the 40. Justin Davis to, to bring him down. A good read that time from the quarterback, Jacquez Johnson. The linebacker closed on his tight end over the middle, and he found his outlet receiver, McKinney. And this is a catch at the 46 yard line. Nice job by William Dukes. Yeah, good job by William Dukes. He sold the goal route. He's able to come back and get a completion on the sideline on the comeback route. But I like the rhythm right now that Jacquez Johnson and this Fort Atlantic offense is in. They speeded things up and they're moving the pocket a little bit and keeping this Auburn defense guessing. Approaching midfield. The tackle by number 17. Jonathan Wallace, the senior. With that carry and Chris Frost, the man that came up to make that hit. Now Johnson steps it up, runs it. And it looks like he's got the first down with about a half a yard to spare. Frost and Carter combining on the tackle and into Auburn territory at the 48. Second time that FAU has penetrated the 50-yard line. Four men come on for the Tigers defensively. The play game three, second down seven. This ball club, on both sides of the ball, Auburn, they do a terrific job substituting yeah. players. Yeah, they really do. They do a great job of getting guys on and off the field and that defensive line we talked about them at the top of the show they rotate a lot of guys they'll go 12 deep almost on that defensive line keeping fresh bodies and fresh legs in the game at all times nothing up the middle is the Auburn Tigers were bringing a couple of men on the blitz Frost came rushing in also got some help from Jake Holland it was a uh, not a six-man line that they were trying to run right into the teeth of. Yeah, that's a couple times now. Florida Atlantic is running. It's a numbers game at the line of scrimmage. Auburn is loading up the box on first and second down, and Florida Atlantic on the last couple plays have continued to try to run that football in there, and that leaves free hitters like Chris Frost was able to do that time and get a big hit on the running back. This one's incomplete. Johnson's pass intended for Intended for Stoshak. Mincy defending. Fourth and nine. I thought Stoshak kind of slowed up on that route a little bit. He had an opportunity, I thought, to stay on his feet and run through that ball, but he kind of thought that Johnson wanted him to stop in the Johnson hole right there and, and get the football, but Johnson was trying to lead him through the, through the zone. Chris Davis back again to accept the punt on his own 10. He has averaged 23, but broke one big one in the first quarter. High snap. High hanger. And Chris will make the fair catch at the 13. Davis makes the fair catch. There is a penalty flag There's back at the line of scrimmage. 34-yard punt. 
What says Mr. Matt Austin? Illegal formation on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty will be tacked on to the end of the kick. First down. First down. First down. So with Nick Marshall back in the Auburn clubhouse with an injured shoulder, Jeremy Johnson leads the Bruce Tigers back out onto the, the field. Brett Lashley, the offensive coordinator, telling us yesterday he loves the way Jeremy Johnson can throw the football. We've seen why. Yeah. Rolling, throwing, Juan Bray. Takes it to the 24. Johnson's the Tigers came out of the gate firing tonight with that running game. Auburn got touchdowns on each of their first three possessions in tonight's game. All on the ground. Second then the fourth touchdown was that great pass from Johnson to Sammy Coates. Shot down the field here and man coverage across the board. Trey Mason. Trey Mason the 32. The stop by number 59. Robinson. First Eugene. down, Auburn. Robinson Eugene. With the tackle for FAU. First down from the 32. 645 left before halftime. 28 nothing Auburn. to throw down the field, but over the head of Ricardo Lewis. LeBlanc defending. But boy, you have to love the way this kid sets up and throws the ball. It comes out of his hands nice. That's for sure. He's got a big arm, a live arm, and they're trying to run the wheel route this time to Lewis, and they fake the screen. They sneak him up the sideline. He had a step. He was behind the secondary of Florida Atlantic. That time, Jeremy Johnson just a little long with the throw. True freshman is Johnson at six foot five. Loads up, fires it out to the 45 to the midfield strike. And the grab made by CJ Usama. Great rhythm that time by Jeremy Johnson. CJ Usama in the slot. He's going to run the post and find this zone, find the hole in the in the coverage that time of Florida Atlantic. But I like the way Jeremy Johnson gets rid of the football. It's a little bit different than what Marshall does. Marshall's play, big throws happen a lot off of broken plays, but Johnson throws the football with timing and rhythm. Trey Mason. Blue to 33. Mason on the carry. Mason, the do-it-all guy for this Auburn offense. He can run in between the tackles. He can also get out on the edge and hurt you, but it's good blocking at the point of attack. Also good blocking by the wide receivers down the field. Mason. Hit and stopped at the 30-yard line. We talked earlier tonight how Auburn is averaging over six yards per rush this season. 6.27. Tonight, 9.4. <laughs> It's been impressive what they've been able to do on the ground. They come into this football game and they had 890 yards on the ground in the last two games. So that number is going to continue to go up. That's the ultimate downhill run. Mason, look at him find that hole. Tripped up as he gets to the 27 yard line. With a great patience waiting for that line to do their thing. He's fun to watch run the football and he's really good at that breaking tackles you know you look at yards Third after contact for Trey Mason he's one of the best in the country but he's a patient runner as you said Bob he let he allowed those blocks to set up and you know, a lot of times you see running backs just hit the hole and it's almost like they're going too fast that time he showed a lot of patience and was able to bounce it to the outside and a native Floridian he's from Lake Worth Florida you see the quick huddle this time by Auburn they like to get to the edge of the defense when they do this Sammy Coates did not hold on. Fourth and four. 
It's one thing you will see Auburn do quite a bit is, is almost like that little short huddle where they'll get there and they'll explode to the line of scrimmage. Everyone gets set quick, and then they get on the edge of your defense very quickly. That time they moved the pocket with Jeremy Johnson, and it was wide open. Sammy Coates had an opportunity to catch that football and run a long ways, but Jeremy Johnson a little inaccurate on the throw. Cody Parkey is going to tr attempt a 44-yard field goal here. His longest to date has been 47. That was opening night against Washington State. This one is good. So Parkey drills his 10th field goal in 12 tries. And it goes to 31 0 Auburn. The new college football show is back. From the SEC to the Pac 12, watch James Bates and Coach Tommy Bowden for in-depth coverage of the week's best matchups. You can catch the new college football show every Thursday night at 7 Eastern on Fox Sports Sound. 31 nothing. The Tigers have the lead with 428 remaining. And Cody Parkey continues his outstanding kicking for Auburn. His senior year is unfolding big time. He's been automatic. He's hit 83 consecutive PATs. And now has added his 10th field goal of the season. He had three field goals in the 2011 game when Florida Atlantic was here. And Auburn won that game after a halftime scare. Nothing frightening about this Birdie except Birdie some of the Birdie Halloween Birdie costumes Birdie. we saw on the stand. <laughs> Reggie Brown, number 22, Damian Porter, who's the third of his last. This one out of the end zone. Cooper kick goes through the end zone for the touchback. So another touchback for Parkey. As he's just been a machine this year for the Tigers. I assume these people are, are dressing up for Halloween. I would hope I so. I may have spoken too soon. Yeah. Or, or staying warm. <laughs> those, uh, those look pretty warm right there, you know. You know, when Scooby-Doo shows up. Yeah. Penalty still first down. Tight end Darian Howard. Boy, it has been a rough day for the Pelini family. Brother Bo and his Nebraska Cornhuskers losing at Minnesota earlier today. And Carl's FAU Owls down 31 0. The first, first half to number 11 play. Auburn. the twain to about the 22 for Jacquez Johnson. Carl Pellini trying to make his name now. Tim is a head coach. He's doing a great job so far with this Florida Atlantic football team. It's not showing up necessarily in the wins and losses, but this is a football team that's getting better and better each and every week. They're a little bit outmanned, obviously, against these Auburn Tigers here on the road, but you look at the way they started the season against Miami and East Carolina and then the progression they've made throughout the season. It's a rebuilding process. I think he's doing a nice job. Russell trying to set up a screen, but Auburn all over that as Lucky Whitehead. Intended for number one. Carl Lawson is coming hard toward the quarterback. Third down. And now it's third and 12. Escapes, wants to throw, heaves it down the sideline, and complete. Intended for Stoshak. Carl Lawson just about had him wrapped up. 
He did, and they tried to hook block Carl Lawson that time, but Johnson was able to get around and break that tackle, and he had an opportunity to get Stoshak down here on the sideline, which would have been a big first down for Florida Atlantic, but when you're moving to your left like that, it's hard to get your, your body flipped around and get your feet back underneath you where you can de deliver an accurate football. Chris Davis, once again deep for Auburn, accepting the bunt of Sean Kelly. Bottles it, dives on it. Auburn ball to 33. He broke that big one early, and he's he's been trying to break another one ever, ever since. 44-yard punt. Tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Rude Coors Light. And here's a look at the TD production for Auburn this season. Through the first eight, 28 rushing, 11 passing. But last year, a distant memory. And what a, was a disastrous season. But it is a new day, a new season, and now a new throw, and it's caught. Sammy Coach takes it to the house. Oh, this young man, Jeremy Johnson, can throw the football. The touchdown pass, 67 yards. 67 yards. You know, they get singled up on the outside with Sammy Coates. Once again, there's no safety help. It's just one-on-one, -on -one, and Coates is going to take the post route with no safety in the middle of the field. And that time, they try to cover him with Kruvon LeBlanc, and it's no no contest with the speed of Sammy Coates and the arm, as you said, Bob, of Jeremy Johnson. Boy, the football comes out of his hands so nice, and it's a different-looking Auburn offense with Johnson in the game. Jeremy Johnson with his second touchdown pass. And Sammy Coates. And take a look here. The safety, wow. is, safety is down to this side, and it leaves one-on-one -on -one coverage out on the outside with Sammy Coates. And when the safety comes down, that's all that Jeremy Johnson is looking at. He takes that step up, and he knows he's got nothing but green grass and one-on-one -on -one coverage with his best and fastest wide receiver out on the edge with Sammy Coates. 38 to nothing. Impressive looking freshman quarterback. Six foot five. He's got all the tools that you want to see out of your quarterback. He's got mobility. He's got the height. He's got the weight. And he obviously has the big strong arm to stretch defenses down the field. Sammy Coates began the night averaging 23 yards per catch, which was the third best in FBS. Tevin Reese of Baylor, Mike Evans of Texas A&M, the only two ahead of him. Tonight, Two touchdown pass receptions and 51 and a half yards. These guys are working on their batting averages tonight. <laughs> they are. 38 nothing. The line drive escapes the up man, now fielded and returned. 25 out to the 30 yard line by Fortner. And the Luke Pyle finally stops him at about the 33-yard line. Under three minutes left in the second quarter. So the offense striking quickly and the Auburn D right back out on the field. First and 10, Jordan Lonick. a nice throw to the 30-yard line, and this ball is caught. And the grab made by McKinney. 38-yard gain. A good read that time by Jock Wes Johnson. It's pretty similar to the play that Sammy Coates caught. Sammy Coates, Sammy Coates caught, I'm sorry, on the previous play uh, for Auburn with the safety coming down, and they run the post on the outside. They get single coverage, and Jock Wes Johnson is able to find McKinney for a big game. First and ten. Auburn rushes four. And the throw over the head of William Dukes. 
John Johnson upset with his wide receiver. You see the communication between Dukes and Johnson, and Johnson thought he was going to go ahead and run the fade pattern, and Duke said he was going to break it off, and for whatever reason, those two not on the same page, and you see the Aaron throw from Johnson. FAU's offensive line a little bit better with pass protection here. Yeah, I think they're doing a good job, but they're also getting rid of the football quickly. Jacquez Johnson, they're calling short passes where he can get rid of it, and then they're moving the pocket a little bit, which is causing Auburn some issues of being able to get to the quarterback. They can't find the launch point. Pass to the outside, and this is going to be a touchdown. Jacquez Johnson takes it 29 yards, and FAU is on the board with 2.13 to play in the second. Jacquez Johnson does a great job of, of reading this. He's going to see the end crash down. Everyone's going to crash down, leaving this lane wide open for Jacquez Johnson to run the football. And they've been running that play a couple times tonight, and Jacquez Johnson has handed that football off to Jonathan Wallace, and Auburn took the bait, and Johnson's able to get to the edge of that Auburn defense and finally get some points on the board for FAU. Mitch Anderson puts it through. After two minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the second quarter, Auburn leads Florida Atlantic 38 to 7. And Johnson does a nice job of selling this run fake. He puts the ball in the belly of Wallace for a long time, forcing that Auburn defense to crash down and try to stop that run. And he gets out on the edge. And he's a big guy at 230 pounds, but he definitely has some speed to get to the end zone as well. 38-7. And four. Mr. Johnson, that is his sixth rushing touchdown of the campaign. Florida Atlantic, we mentioned, coming out of Conference USA. They will get back into league play. The first meeting ever with Tulane. Another surprise team in the country this year. Homecoming next weekend in Boca. Talk about Tulane. The Green Wave and Auburn with the biggest turnarounds. Auburn has doubled its win total from last year. And the only other team in the country with three more wins than a year ago is uh, Tulane. They were 2-10 and ten a year ago, and they're 5-2 and two this year. Return from the six. Juan Bray, 25-30. One play returns from the five. Well, with the way that this offensive line has come together, no surprise under the veteran tutelage of J.B. Grimes. He does a great job, and we talked to Gus Malzahn and Rhett Lashley about J.B. Grimes, and they Versus talked about Auburn his ability to teach and how much these Auburn players respect him and they listen to him, but he's great at techniques and fundamentals, and it's showing up in here, here in this offensive line. On first and ten, here's Grant. They denied him the corner that time. J.D. Grimes, Elizabeth, is a veteran coach who has taught 11 future NFL centers, and he's got another great one in Reese Dismukes. Well, that's right, and Malzahn described him as the best teacher he has ever been around. His attention to detail would amaze you, which coming from Gauss Malzahn is pretty impressive, but more important, his players absolutely love him. You said it, 11 centers to the NFL. He's been a part of 14 different bowl games. 38-7. And this is a, an offensive line not only have they perfected this run blocking scheme for these quarterbacks, they've also done a great job in sacks. Last year, Auburn's offensive line allowed 37 sacks. This year, coming into the game, six second best in the conference, 12th best in the country. That, that's a very impressive stat, and a lot of that has to do with the improvement of the offensive line, but a lot of it has to do with the schemes that they're in now. This Gus Malzahn system allows these quarterbacks to get rid of the football quickly. They're not back there holding the ball, and anytime you can run the football as well as Auburn does, it's going to open things up on the outside. You're going to get a lot of single coverage throws like we've seen here tonight. 
Well, guys, we've also been talking about how physical this offensive line is and how much they have improved. And Lashley said that J.B. Grimes doesn't say a lot. He keeps saying, continue to push it. We're bigger, we're better, we're faster. And he is talking the whole time down here on the sideline. Use of it to the 48. The game is 16. Dismukes. First down from the 48. Tunday. Enrique is also in 65. This one nearly picked off. Johnson's pass incomplete. Beyond the reach of Usama. And that time, Milstead had one right in his bread basket. He went to Usama one too many times. Just a couple times, they've been able to work Usama over the middle on those little post routes. And that time, he was triple covered on the throw. And, Mark, and Johnson threw the football high over the middle. And that's one thing you can't do because those safeties are lurking behind the play. And Milstead almost came up with an interception. Jeremy Johnson now 5-9, 142, two touchdowns. Time, scrambling, looking to make a play with his feet. Hold out of bounds. First down, Auburn at the FAU 38. Johnson is impressive. We've seen the arm strength tonight, and here's a little bit of the mobility. Nothing going on down the field. FAU covered him up pretty well, and there's pressure on Johnson, but he's so big at six foot five, he's able to break a tackle in the backfield and run out and get the edge and get a first down. left in the hand. Keeper. Sliding to the 28. He learned that lesson. He learned the lesson, you know. He watched his, uh, his buddy Nick Marshall take the big hit on the sideline after he got a big run. That time, you get all you can get, and you get down. You live to play another down. To the 23 yard line, Marcus Davis out of Delray Beach, Florida. Nick Marshall obviously done for the night with that injured shoulder. And of course, that's big news as they get sent to head to Arkansas next week. That's a penalty flag. Uh, they're going to get Greg Robinson, the left tackle, 73 for holding. It was Johnson more of a tackle than a hold, but <laughs> Johnson trying to escape to the outside, and Robinson just threw his man to the ground. And Matt Austin conferring with his uh, mates. You see the headset system that allows the referee to talk to his fellow refs. That has been a great innovation that the Southeastern Conference spearheaded last season, and Really helps move the game Holding, along. Offense 73, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Greg, we'll give you a mulligan on that one. Quarterback's running all over the place. <laughs> he didn't know he's going to throw it or run it. Yeah, Greg's played a really good football game here tonight. Yeah, We've mentioned hard. his name a couple times. He's been able to get out on in front of some screens and throw some big blocks that time. Just got a little sloppy with his technique. Quick throw on the inside. Coates upended at the 21 yard line. The pass to number 18, Sammy LeBlanc. Coates. Tackled by number seven, Trayvon LeBlanc. 12 seconds left in the hand. Well, good blocking out in front of this screen. They get the football the in the hands of their best player out in space. He's able to break one tackle, but a good finishing tackle that time by LeBlanc at the end of the play. Auburn timeout. And the Tigers have one left with 12 seconds left in the period. So Nick Marshall, the junior from Pine View, Georgia. And you can see fiddling, he's got something, some ice or something on that shoulder. And uh, the severity, of course, to be determined is if we get more information, we'll be sure to pass it along. But that has to be a little disconcerting to the Auburn faithful. Well, there's no question it is. You know, anytime your starting quarterback goes down and he's a guy that uh, continues to get better and better each week and has a better understanding of this offense, but 
luckily for Auburn, you do have a quarterback in Jeremy Johnson that you have a lot of confidence in. He started one game already this season for Marshall and played so well, and he's come on here tonight in relief and played tremendous. To the end zone. Incomplete. Yeah, that's Johnson the battle I was looking complete. forward to seeing all night First coming down. into this football game. It's Sammy Coates on Dejon Smith, and Smith has four interceptions already on the season for that FAU defense, and that time he did a great job of staying in front of Sammy Coates and not allowing him to get behind him for the touchdown. With six seconds, Cody Parkey is brought back out onto the field, and he'll attempt a 40-yard field goal. Hit a 43-yarder earlier. Top and no good. The 40 yard attempt is no good. And that will be the half. The teams head to the locker room at Jordan Hare, Gus Malzahn, and his number 11 Auburn Tigers dominating in that first half. Scores and highlights coming up 38 7 at the break in Auburn. Hands it off. Mason drives his way right up the gut into the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn. And they'll hand it to Corey Grant. Ran right in. There he goes down to far side. I just running 15, 10, 5, gone. Just like that. 43 yards before you can blink. As impressive as you would expect for the number 11 team in the country, leading Florida Atlantic 38 to 7. As we come back to Jordan Hare, Bob Rathman and Tim Couch, and what a ground game. We talked yeah. about it, Tim, at the top of our broadcast with the way the offensive line has progressed. Smash Mouth football is back on the plane. <laughs> it's back in a big way, and we know about the three running backs that they have here with Grant and Mason and Cameron Artis Payne, and those guys have all been as advertised, but this offensive line, they're controlling the line of scrimmage. They're dominating, and this offensive line and this running game is racking up a ton of yards, 270 yards on the ground in that first half for Auburn. Uh, Hyundai. First half game summary. Let's take a look at our direct auto insurance coverage of the game. And this first half of offense, here's Nick Marshall. Here's Grant. Here's Davis. I mean, they did a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, they did. And, and they got the football into the hands of their playmakers. The running backs did their thing. Nick Marshall was very effective running the football before he took the big hit on the sideline and, and injured that shoulder. Why would you lower your right shoulder to hit someone? No way. No. I mean, that's your <laughs> moneymaker as a quarterback. You know, you're, you're, right on the, you're right on the sideline. All you have to do is step out of bounds. But the last thing you want to do is take a hit right on that right shoulder, your throwing arm, and then you take the sack and you get driven into the ground and you land on that shoulder again. In, and now you're out of this football game and luckily for Auburn they have a quarterback like Jeremy Johnson who's able to come in and be so efficient two touchdown passes in relief of Nick Marshall and Nick out for the remainder of the night after gaining 73 yards on the ground and throwing for 10 and of course a precautionary move to be sure but four SEC battles in November await this Auburn team that still has its fate in its hands in terms of winning the SEC West. And the opening kickoff to FSU as we begin the third quarter with a touchback. 38 to 7. And the Owls will have it at the 25. FAU got on the board right at the end of the first half by that touchdown run by their quarterback, Jacquez Johnson. He went for 29 yards on the TD run to make it 38-7. And you see what he's done tonight in the air as well. So here we go from the 25, first and 10. Penalty flag 
And a deep ball to start the quarter, and it's going to be caught. Great job by William Dukes in double coverage. And Dukes beat Jonathan Jones that time on the play, but it was good recognition by Jacquez Johnson. He realized he had a free play. Auburn defensively was offside, so he knew he had a chance to throw one up for grabs. Offside, defense 94, a penalty's decline. Play results in the first down. And a beautiful throw that time by Johnson. They get the one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. They've taken a couple shots down the field with Dukes in this football game, but those passes have been broken up. That time, this time, he's able to get the ball to the outside shoulder of the wide receiver and force the defensive back to come through the receiver to try and make a play. So great location on that throw from Johnson. 40-yard gain. First and 10 at the Auburn 35. Quarterback keeps it. And Johnson inside the 30. A little Johnson better rhythm. Yeah. And better uh, line play for FSU. Right, exactly. And going back to that last drive, going into halftime, they're able to get some points on the board, and now they've kind of found something they feel comfortable with, and that's getting Jacquez Johnson out of the edge, running the football, and taking some shots down the field. Second and four for Florida Atlantic. There's opportunities down the field right now for Florida Atlantic. Auburn has walked up in the face of these wide receivers. The safety is down, only one safety deep, so an opportunity to get some plays, big plays down the field in the passing game. And the throw is good to Stoshak. Johnson's pass to number 88. First down for FAU inside the 20 at about the 18-yard oh, line. The best... Florida Atlantic has looked tonight offensively on a sustained drive. Auburn showing a blitz look this time at the line of scrimmage, and if it's going to be a pass, Johnson's going to have to get the football out of his hand quick. Holland creeping up into the box, now backpedals. Johnson with pressure from the outside, and he's taken down at the 26 as D. Ford came in. Boy, what a year he's put together. Had that leg injury in camp, missed the opener. But D. Ford of late is coming on strong. He had two sacks in the Ole Miss game and then two sacks, that big one at the end on Manziel last week. Well, here comes D. Ford. He's just going to come around the edge with a speed rush. And that time they confused Jacquez Johnson a little bit. It looked like it was going to be a blitz look from Auburn. They backed out of that thing. They played coverage. And Johnson had a quick pass called, and there was nowhere to go with the football. Over the middle and complete. And down to about the 12 yard line. Number 21, Tony Moore. Tony Moore, the junior Michael from Tallahassee, Ryan making Ryan the grab. Good play call that time by offensive coordinator Brian Wright, expecting some pressure from this Auburn defense. You run the middle screen to the running back. You draw the pressure in, you let that defensive line get up the field, and you dump that screen right in behind him. FAU and Kyle Pelini faced with a third and five. Jacquez Johnson out of the gun. Pressure. Throws to the end zone and incomplete. Sailing it over the head of Darian Howard, his tight end. <laughs> Had an opportunity that time with Darian Howard in the back of the end zone. It was one-on-one -on -one coverage, and he had a step, but the pressure in the face of Jacquez Johnson forced the air and throw. So on fourth down, Mitch Anderson will come on, and he will attempt a 31-yard field goal. It's been hit or miss <laughs> with Anderson. He's 6 for 12 this year. Especially on this hash, he normally pushes these steps to the right. Dead solid, perfect. There you go. What, what problems, right? <laughs> 38 to 10. 11.45 to go, third quarter on the plane. Hot Tiger back in Atlanta. Coors Light game break. Check it on the action in Columbia, Missouri. Matty Malkin for the Inter James Franklin. It's third and two. They roll him out right. Marcus Lucas, one of the big wide receivers there for the Tigers, pushing down defenders. They would, this would add to a field goal to make it a three-possession game. 17 zip, fellas. Back to you. For everyone that had Missouri playing in the SEC championship game in Atlanta, please stand up. <laughs> I'm going to stay seated. <laughs> <laughs> 38-10.
38 to 10. Our Academy Sports and Outdoors White Stump leaders. This is the SEC in the BCS. Standings released last Sunday. Alabama 1, Mizzou 5, and Auburn number 11 after that win at Texas A&M. Tigers number 13, then the Aggies are one big today over Vandy. South Carolina will be dropping if they indeed go on and lose that game at uh, Mizzou tonight. That's not looking very good for the Gamecocks. What an impressive run for Missouri. I know you love their wide receivers. I love the wide receivers at Missouri. Big guys, we're talking about, they, they would be big for a basketball team. You know, they're 6'6", six, 6'5", six, 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 those three wide receivers, and they all run, all run well as well. 4'4", four, four guys, so a lot of targets for Matty Mock, their quarterback, is playing so well for them. Ron Bray with an excellent return over the 35 to about the 39 yard line and a late flag comes in. Ron Bray getting to his feet. Matt Austin checking on the foul. Following the play, personal foul, unnecessary rough test number 30 of the kicking team, 15 yard penalty, first down. See, number 30 that time, that's Jeremy Gaskins. He's going to come in late and get a hit on Bray, and that's going to set this Auburn offense up across midfield, and that's not what you want to do is put this offense on a short field. You hadn't been able to stop them all night long. The last thing you want to do is give them a short field to go. 38-10 as the Tigers come up first and 10. True freshman Jeremy Johnson took over for the... Injured Nick Marshall in that first half. Gained to about 23 for Corey Grant. Good job of playing that speed sweep that time. And Auburn comes out, they do the short huddle again. And like I said in the first half, when they do that, they want to get to the edge of your defense with speed, and they want to do that with Corey Grant. But FAU on defense that time didn't allow it. Martin Wright made a nice play of pursuit from the inside out. Frosh flips over to the right. Over the middle, complete to the 23 yard line. Good pass for number six, Jeremy Johnson, to number one, Reed, Ron Reed. Making his first catch of the game. First down, Auburn at the 24. Easy throw and catch that time for Johnson and Reed. They get him matched up on a safety. It's one-on-one -on -one with the safety Christian Milstead, and he's just in off coverage and doesn't want to get uh, get beat deep with the speed of Reed, so he's off, and it's an easy pitch and catch. Artis Payne to the 18. Number 44, Cameron Artis Payne on the carry. He is hard to bring down. Stopped by number 45. Andre a Kirk. compact 5'11", 210. Great in short yardage situations, but also has shown the speed once he gets into the open field to do some damage. 58 yards rushing tonight for Gus Malzahn. Auburn began the game with the concentrated rushing attack. That wow. drive. Some power. Oh. Cameron Orton is paying to the one yard the line. <laughs> Tigers ready to go. On first and goal, a 17 yard gain. And a loose football. John's on the carry. Matt Austin blows his whistle. It will be Auburn ball. Second down. And Jeremy Johnson, very fortunate. Let's see what happened at the end of the play. Yeah, they come right back Second with down, the same play they ran to get down on the goal line. But this time, Johnson keeps the football in. Hard to tell that time if his knee was down. It looked like he had control of that football when his knee hit the ground anyway. But nonetheless, he's able to get on that ball and recover it and maintain possession for Auburn. Touchdown, Tigers. Cameron, Artemis, Payne. The fourth 
different Tiger with a rushing touchdown in tonight's game. Cody Parkey to kick it. Perfect again. And that improves the offered advantage to 35 points and 45 to 10, but they have 35 to go in the third quarter. Fifth rushing touchdown this season for Cam Artis Payne, 45 10. Tigers. Forty-five ten, Auburn leading it. Time for the Husqvarna high-powered drive, and we'll focus in on the last drive for Auburn. It began with Quan Bray's kickoff return, a healthy one indeed, and then an extra 15 yards tacked on due to the late hit on the personal foul. And that's where Jeremy Johnson in this running game took over. Johnson very comfortable in the pocket, delivering the football, and then Cameron Artis Payne a couple good runs, and he finishes the drive off with a touchdown. Six plays, 61 yards. It took 258 to consume. And Artis Payne taking it home. 45-10. Cody Parkey gets it to drill one. Slow kick that will bounce and field it at the five-yard line. Oh, and a big hit. Brown Thank goodness everybody's line. okay, and that's Jonathan Hit Jones on special Jonathan teams. Jones. Wow. wow. Man, heard that one all the way up here. Boy. Take a look at this one. Jonathan Jones flying down the field on kick coverage, and just listen to this one. Man. It's a physical hit that time from the backup defensive back. Jones only 5'10", 180 pounds, but you can see. Very, very physical. From the 24. Down the middle and too long. Intended for DeAndre Richardson. Yeah, that time Johnson kind of predetermined where he was going to go with that football. He locked in on DeAndre Richardson, even though there was double coverage. The safety was over the top that time, helping out. He had an opportunity to come over the middle and work some one-on-one -on -one stuff. Great hit. Oh, that was well played by Auburn. And that time, it was Casanova McKenzie who plugged that hole right at the point of attack. And McKenzie, the will linebacker, you're going to see him right here. He's just going to shoot the A-gap, and he's back in the backfield before the FAU offensive line can get a hand on him. Throwing the football tonight, Jacquez Johnson is 8 of 18, 121 yards. Third and 13. Side pitch is a good one, but not enough for the first down. They'll be a yard shy at the 33-yard line. Number nine, Nixon Dorvillis. 12-yard game by Nixon Dorvillis, but not enough for the punt coming for FAU. John Kelly in punt formation. Number 80, Sean Davis. Kelly kicked it Steve six Rowland. times in the first half for 44.5. Chris Davis returned at four. Marcus Davis is the deep man here in the second half. He'll return it from the 15. Hold down at the 22. So breaking the action here with 6.35 to go, third quarter. SEC football is brought to you in part by Husqvarna, the world's largest producer of outdoor power equipment. Welcome back to Tiger Town. 45 to 10, Auburn leads it. Good. 
six minutes, 35 seconds. Left in the third, Bob Rathbun, Tim Couch, Elizabeth Morrow with you from the Plains. Tigers come out offensively. Jeremy Johnson, the true freshman. First and 10 offers on the 22. Well, they're going to go out of the Wildcat this time. That's Kyle Fraser. Yeah, that is Kyle Fraser getting a chance to get back behind the wheel. Yeah, Kyle Fraser <laughs> played quarterback for this Number football team last year. They switched Fraser him over to the defensive side of the ball and had him play in a little bit of safety. It didn't work out for him on that side. So now he's back on offense and getting an opportunity to run the Wildcat here a little bit in the in the uh, third quarter. Now Jeremy Johnson goes back in. Pain to him for a couple of yards to the 27. Well, once again, the Auburn Tigers have gone over 300 yards in rushing offense. Their third straight game with Western Carolina, Texas A&M, and tonight, and it is the fourth time they've gone over 300 plus on the ground this season. That is a remarkable statistic. Clock is at one on the snap and the throw out to the 32. Marcus Davis. Last Marcus year, Davis. this time, he was a three star high school quarterback down at Delray Beach, Florida. First down from the 33. And is really starting to come on now as a wide receiver. Well, he is. He had the big catch last week against Texas AM where he had the ball pinned to his helmet on the big yeah. third down and set him up for the game winning touchdown. They used to make catches like that only in the Super Bowl. <laughs> now it's come to the SEC, and here comes young Marcus. Out to about the 40. They get that time by Adarius Blanton, their will linebacker. He's a guy that never comes off the field for this FAU defense. He will switch in and play at the Mike linebacker position in their nickel and dime packages, but uh, a very athletic guy and probably the best player on the defensive side of the ball for Florida Atlantic. A team high 49 tackles coming into the game. Sideline to sideline. Sideline to sideline. Artist Payne. First down for the Tigers at their own 49. Now Frazier back out there for Auburn. 23 first downs, and I think that is a number, Tim, that will always, well, not always, but nine times out of ten, will tell you who's winning the line of scrimmage. Well, you can imagine how that's gone tonight in a 45 to 10 game. To the 46-yard line, three and a half to go, third period. Second down and five. Second down five. For the home team. Artis Payne has been the featured the ball carrier here in the third quarter for Gus. He hasn't dropped off his intensity one iota. As yeah, Corey Grant's in the game now, you got to be expecting that speed sweep, but they think it. with does Kyle Frazier. First down on them at the 33 yard line of FAU. You know, I think it's impressive the way that Gus Malzahn has has given these guys their roles on this football team of these running backs. Trey Mason's your all-purpose guy, and Corey Grant's in the game. You see him. He's going to come across. He gets so much attention as he goes across the formation of that defense because when he's in the game, they want him to run the edges on those speed sweeps, and that time they're able to fake it, and Kyle Frazier able to pull that thing and get some big yardage. The push to the 29-yard line. Corey Grant, the ball carrier. Grant taking it down. Grant's a junior. You don't often see him run between the tackles. 70 yards to his credit tonight. Second down six. But with the developing depth in this running back core, Jeremy Johnson getting a breather right now. 
This Auburn team has a lot of weapons and they can rest people along the way. Frazier. To the 28. Frazier on the carry. Hit by number 15, Rundell Johnson. Inside the final two minutes. This is a man who's going to get a lot of votes. Third SEC down. Coach of the Year and yeah. National Coach of the Year. Yeah, no question about it. The job he's done in a short period of time with this Auburn football team, and you know he, he had an advantage because he was here as an offensive coordinator, so these players kind of understood his system and all the success that they had here when Gus was the offensive coordinator, so they bought in really uh, really quickly to what he was uh, what he was trying to teach. But it was remarkable as we were here the first time back in early September talking to Gus and I remember asking him well how many guys are still here mm -hmm. and it was remarkable the turnover yeah a lot of being turnover. gone just one season right yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing the turnover that happened with this football team but you know I think what, what I was saying was Gus's system was proven to be effective here in, oh, at man. Auburn and they go on and they win a national championship with that with that system so when he walks in the door the players eyes are on him and they respect him immediately and they're buying into what he's teaching and Tim that's a great point because those guys up front were with him guys like Dismukes right. Slade yeah yeah they knew what it was all about yeah. and that's been the cornerstone done for their success. That's exactly right. And offensive linemen, they love Major to run block. They down. want to fire off and they want to blow people off the ball. And they knew when Gus Malzahn got here, he was going to bring a physicality to this offense and allow those offensive linemen to do just that and fire off and, and blow people off the line of scrimmage. From the 21-yard line, I believe Auburn's going to let the quarter expire. They will. That's the third. And we'll head to the other end of the field. Third quarter in the books. With our score, Auburn 45 and FAU 10 on SEC College Football Saturday. Coors Light says don't get flagged for breaking the law. It's a cold, hard fact. 21 means 21. So keep yourself and your friends in the game. The Auburn Tigers returning to Jordan-Hare Stadium after their monumental win a week ago in Texas A&M. And it has been sheer domination of Florida Atlantic. An Auburn team that rushed for 271 first half yards, putting the finishing touches on their seventh win of the season, 15 minutes remaining. Here in Auburn, a look at our Crystal Game summary. 238 yards for Florida Atlantic. 341 rushing, 202 passing for Auburn. And we start the fourth quarter. Bob Rathbun, Tim Couch, Elizabeth Morrow, and the great men and women in our crew, Gus Malzahn's team, taking care of business tonight against this Owls team out of Conference USA. Second time that Florida Atlantic has come here. They were here in September 2011. Auburn got a scare in that one, but won the game 30 24. Different story tonight. Kyle Frazier. And a flag comes out. Frazier gets it down to the 10. Holding. Offense 53. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Devontae Danzi. Hanging his head as he walks back. <laughs> Auburn will finish at Arkansas, at Tennessee, Georgia here, then an off week, and then the Iron Bowl with Alabama here. A big month of November, and if you'd have told Auburn fans at the beginning of the season, you'll hit the first of November <laughs> with a chance to win the SEC West. I right. wonder what the reaction would have been. <laughs> well, they'll take it now. And I'll tell you, they're almost, besides one bad half at LSU, they have an opportunity yep. to be undefeated right now in this season. So it's going to be an exciting finish for these Auburn Tigers going down the stretch. Grant. To the 25. Hey, with all... Uh, 
due respect too to the Missouri Tigers. You're talking about Gus getting consideration for coach there. How about Gary Pinkle? Yeah, Gary Pinkle, a guy who was on the hot seat last year. He had to deal with all the injuries that they had on that offensive line. His quarterback, James Franklin, was beat up all last season, and everybody wanted to run him out of town. And now this year, everyone's healthy, and look what they're doing. And they're, they're, the, they're the surprise team, along with Auburn, of, of the conference. Nice throw. Tipped and intercepted in the end zone. Florida Atlantic will get it at the one yard line it appears now they say the ball belongs to Florida Atlantic Johnson's pass ruled an interception it looked like Smith got that thing well uh, that was a great oh. great recovery that time by DeJon Smith he tipped was, it away yeah he tipped it away he was beat initially intercepted the ball on the two yard line his momentum took him into the end zone by rule the ball will be placed at the two yard line first down Tony Stevens tried to come out of there with it, but he no almost, luck. He almost did. He did end up with the football, but I think that they had possession of it already. But John Smith, the best cornerback on this football team, able to get a hand on it, tip it over to the safety. Milstead coming over the top to help in coverage and able to get the interception. His first of the year, but paid the price. They're checking him as he walks back to the bench. Well, sort of the good news, bad news. You get the ball back, but you're, <laughs> but you're backed up in the shadow of your goalpost. I'm wondering if this play is not going to be reviewed. Yeah, I think they're going to take a look at this one. See Tony Stevens and Christian Milstead fighting for this football. Milstead has the ball clearly in his possession. And he's hit there on the one yard line right where they spotted the ball. And as they're going to the ground, they're fighting for that football. And at the end, Stevens did come up with it. The ruling on the field of an interception is under further review. Well, Matt Austin will make the jock down to get the the headsets on right you, you read Gus's lips he said simultaneous possession and obviously that would go to the offense but I don't think that's going to be the case because Milstead actually had the ball first and then Stevens goes over and tries to pull the ball out and I think at, at that point he's already down you can see they're fighting for the football as Milstead had it they're going to the ground and you see at the end Stevens actually does end up with it but I think it was later through the process of the, of the interception but what a play made in that secondary by DeJohn Smith. Oh. I mean, this guy has fantastic ball skills. He has great ball skills. He closed on that play initially when he let it go, when he let the pass go on the little post route, you say, well, that's going to be a touchdown because he was beaten by a couple steps, and he closed on that thing and undercut it and was able to get a hand on it and tip it over to the safety coming over in coverage. Matt Austin is still on the headphones. And the ruling has been made. Steve Landis is our replay official. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down, Fort Atlantic. Yeah, it's, the, it's the right call. Milstead had possession of that football as they went into the end zone. They were fighting for it, but he, I think he maintained possession as his knee hit the ground, and then after that, that's when Stevens took the ball away from him, but uh, Milstead had a nice job of coming over in coverage, and now we'll see what Florida Atlantic can do coming off their own goal line. Jack West Johnson, a quarterback for the Owls. Fourth quarter from the historic Jordan Harris Stadium. And is that a safety? Did he get out? No, they're going to call him out of the half-yard line. Well, I sure thought they had him in the end zone. I didn't think he got the ball across from the angle that we have. Now, we'll take another look at him and see if he was able to get out of there. But Kenneth Carter, number 92, the senior defensive lineman, put a big hit on, on the running back. And hard to tell from that angle whether the ball crossed the plane in the goal line and got out of there. But we'll see here. Where's the ball as he crosses? Yeah, I think he did just get out. and He may have lost a couple inches on the play, but I think he did cross the goal line with the football, and that's a, that's a good call.
Quinn Johnson takes it out of danger. Jonathan Ford brought him down as he's out. At about the seven. A little bit of breathing room, but it's third and six. The first time out of the half. Owls will stop it. 12 15. Left in our game. We'll step aside and come right back. 45 10 Auburn. This is my first step toward a fulfilling and successful career. This is our one medicine approach, which links discoveries in one species to advance in health in all species. This is my commitment to a premier education. SEC College Football is brought to you in part by Toyota, Crystal, Regions Bank, and Frost Brewed Coors Light. Forty-five ten Auburn. Third and about the six here for Florida Atlantic. Johnson wants to throw down the sideline. Incomplete at the 30-yard line. Defended by number 23, Jonathan Ford. Jonathan Ford did a great job defending. He did. Johnson did the right thing. He just had to throw that football up for grabs and give his receiver an opportunity to come down with it. But it looked like the wrong route that time. They had two receivers kind of in the same spot. You see the other receiver there, and that's always a mistake. But... German not, not able to go up and get that football. Ford did a nice job of playing the ball. Kelly with the punt. Davis at his own 49-yard line. Eight punt tonight for Kelly. On the 42. And a nice downfield hit. For Joe Fisher. Davis is David injured. Brown, number 49. We'll check out Marcus when we come back. Yards. SEC College Football is brought to you in part by CPI Security, Ford, ZMAX, and Direct Auto Insurance. Welcome back to Auburn. Will they lead 45 to 10? I'm Elizabeth Mora. Will join us this Wednesday night. That would be the night before Halloween for another SEC Gridiron Light, 10 Eastern on Fox Sports South. We are going to talk about these three running backs for Auburn, featuring them Grant, Mason, and Artis Payne. We will also talk about Florida and Georgia. SEC Gridiron Live every Wednesday night during football season, 10 Eastern on Fox Sports South. And Tim, I went to go ask that fan if you could borrow his Scooby Doo costume, and he said <laughs> yes. Oh, well, thank you. I can use that about right now. You know, I didn't know if that was Johnny Manziel and his Halloween costume from last <laughs> year or, or what that was, but it looks pretty comfortable. <laughs> you know, I just shuddered a thing. There he is. What, uh, from the he's got it working. He does. But I do shudder to think what Ovi and Bates are going to come up with next Wednesday You never know. Costume. I will say that. You never know. <laughs> Ford. Number 23, Jonathan Ford on the carry. We'll He's have this carry, four. Clanton making the tackle. Uh, Darius has uh, put well, another, five another fine game Back together. Down. Jonathan Wallace is in a quarterback here with 11.25 to play. 45-10. Auburn leading second and 15. When we went to break, we showed you Marcus Davis flat on his back. He looked like he got his foot stuck in the ground. And after attending to him, he popped up and jogged off the field under his own power, so he looks to be okay. 
Trevon Reed with the grab. Well, you're speaking of injury. That has been the story for Reed uh, during his time here at Auburn. This guy has had a shoulder problem, then he broke his collarbone, trying to find a way to fit in. He was such a highly touted recruit coming out of Louisiana. So all three quarterbacks plus Kyle Frazier tonight for the Tigers. And Wallace breaks this one. Jonathan Wallace carries for the Auburn Just an touchdown. embarrassment of riches. It really is. You Auburn know, you Tigers. talk about having three really good running backs here at Auburn. How about these quarterbacks, Nick Marshall, Jeremy Johnson, and now we see Jonathan Wallace. All these guys, big arms, they can throw the football, but also very mobile guys. Wallace showed a lot of speed on that run. As we showed you, a sophomore from Phoenix City, Alabama. Great luxury this deep into a season. A non conference game pops up, but you got a big lead. You get a lot of guys valuable playing time. Ford turning that corner. 20. And down to about the 13. Boy, this guy can scoot too. Jonathan Ford. A freshman. And Jonathan Ford with a great run, but look who set it up with the block on the outside. This is Kyle Frazier right here who was in it quarterback earlier in this football game. Look at the block that he gets that springs Ford to the outside. He comes back, and it's not a devastating block, but he gets two guys on the ground, and that's what gets the running back to the corner. Six. Clock rolling at 8.40. And Auburn looking to eclipse the 50-point plateau. The high water mark was 62 in the Western Carolina game. And they have been racking up the points and the yards these last three weeks. Yeah, they've been so efficient in the red zone. They're the best red zone offense in the SEC, scoring almost 90% of the time they get down here. Flag will cost them five. False start, 53 offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. My fault. <laughs> it's a couple on Danzy tonight, so <laughs> there's a few things Malzahn can look at and try to clean up. There's been some, some penalties and some things like that, a couple turnovers, so... It's not going to be. Mm -hmm. Coaches always find the worst, mm -hmm. than, no matter what the That's score right. is. Ah, uh, the film never lies. That's right. <laughs> Wallace. You know, speaking of Gus and Red Lashley, and I'm sure that they are going to downplay down it, as Hurt. you would expect. But going to Arkansas next week yeah. is going to be some kind of emotional for those two guys. Well, it has to be, you know, and, and I'm sure they will downplay, and I'm sure you're right about that. But there has to be, there's so much, there's so many ties. They coached high school ball there, Gus did, and Rhett played for Gus there in Arkansas in high school. Then they have all the success at the University of Arkansas. So there's going to be a lot of emotion going back there, and I'm sure it will be for Gus and this, this football team. But uh, he has to like the football team that he has. And, the ability to go on the road and get wins in the SEC right now. Wallace. Skids. The knee touched inside the five. He'll be fourth down. Josh Orsino denied him the six. Fourth down one from the four yard. Fourth and one. Auburn can get a first down at a just inside the three. Four. Tripped up, but I think he got the first down. Jonathan Ford on the carry. 
And the FAU is waving it off. It's going to be close. And yeah, they say short. no. Yeah. It'll be FAU ball. The play fails to pick up the first down. So the ball goes over to the Owls on downs and we'll step aside with 6.23 remaining in a 45-10 game. SEC College Football is brought to you in part by South Walton, Florida. Go to visit southwalton.com to find your perfect beach. The Heisman Proof. That one belongs to the man they call Bo, this week's Regions Bank SEC great, Vincent Edward Jackson. Multi-sport star here, track, baseball, and unforgettable on the gridiron. 4,300 yards rushing, 45 touchdowns, and that 1985 Heisman Trophy. Florida Atlantic coming out once again deep number 22, Damian Fortner. as Damian Fortner takes the carry. Complete and intended for Stoshak. So a third down and 10 coming for Greg Hankerson and company. Play clock down to seven. Ackerson, I've been faking some pressure and the clock expires. Timeout, Florida Atlantic. Got the timeout the second before timeout the double zero. A timeout at Auburn, 540 to play. Tigers 45, Owls 10. SEC College Football is presented by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Welcome back to Auburn. After the FAU timeout, it is third and ten. From his end zone, Angerson throwing, and this is going to be incomplete. Up near the 40-yard line, Stoshak, the intended receiver, Jones defending. Fourth down. Well, Greg Hankerson unable to get a first down. And FAU will punt the football. Number 16, John Kelly in punt formation. Number Quan four, Bray back pedaling to his 50. And the busiest man tonight for FAU has been the punter, Sean Kelly. Chased and tackled. A loss on the catch. We'll be back five minutes and 18 seconds remaining on the planes. Well, the scoreboard says 45 to 10 Auburn, but there is some great news for Florida Atlantic. If you were with us earlier tonight on this punt, Freedom Woodfield delivered the hit and then could not get up. He was carted off the field and taken to be checked out, and there he is, neck brace, but walking around with his teammates, and that is great to see. That is great to see. You know, anytime someone's carted off the field like that, you worry, and you haven't seen him move around too much, but he's on the sideline, he's up standing up, and that, that's a welcome sight for FAU fans. For more, let's go. Excuse me, sir. For more, let's go to Elizabeth. 
Well, guys, thank you. I talked to Freedom. He said all x-rays were negative. He did get the wind knocked out of him. His neck is sore, but it was so awesome to see all of his teammates come up and hugging him a sigh of relief on the FAU sideline. That is good. Good to see. If all he comes out of there is with a sore neck, that would yeah. be a blessing. Late flag. Illegal block in the back. Offense 86. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Eighty-six. That's Dimitri Reese out at wide receiver. Auburn getting the opportunity to play a lot of backup, second, third string guys in this football game and get a chance to get out on the field and get some action. First down, number thirty-five. Wallace hit as he was trying to make a move. Good job. That. Young Brandon man Bryant. is Brandon Bryant. He's played the whole game. Played the whole game, and he's a really good football player. The biggest defensive lineman that FAU has at 260 pounds, but he's an active guy, one of those high motor guys that makes plays all over the field, very quick off the off the ball. And that time you see how fast he's in the Auburn backfield. Seven. The stop by number 45, Andre Kirk. Third and long. Third, down 16. Third and 16 to be exact. As we took under four minutes to play. Kyle Frazier back in at quarterback. Interesting. Time out, Auburn. Auburn. First time out of the half. Interesting how Auburn interchanges folks between offense and defense. You talked about Frazier. We also saw Jonathan Ford tonight. Yeah, he's listed as a defensive quarterback. Was on the offensive side of the Western Carolina game. They moved him back with all the injuries back there, but he's gotten back on the field as a running back tonight. Yeah, they have some uh, very versatile guys on both sides of the football, and that's a good thing, especially as many injuries that they've had in the secondary yes. on defense. They've had to move a lot of guys over there just out of necessity, but it's also built some depth that way as well. So a win tonight, and then it's back into SEC play. At Arkansas and at Tennessee, Georgia here, then Alabama. And as great as Auburn has played, those games will not be no. easy. No, no easy road left for Auburn in, in this schedule. But, uh, you know, they're playing great right now. They're, you, you have to worry about the health of quarterback Nick Marshall, where he's going to be after, after this football game with the shoulder in. Frazier to the 40. Now Frazier carries the run right down. South Carolina has come back to tie that game at Missouri. Connor Shaw <laughs> is unbelievable. Yeah, he is. And I don't know where that football team would, would be without Connor Shaw. You know, we had an opportunity to call the South Carolina and Kentucky game, and Shaw was questionable for that football game. He ended up starting and, and played so well. And if he wasn't in, I think Kentucky would have probably won that game. And obviously, Missouri up big in that one. They put Connor Shaw in. He brings him right back and have tied, has tied up the football game. And it's going to overtime at Columbia. Clark with a high hanger. Beautiful punt. No return. Fair catch at the 12 yard line. So FAU will get it one more time with 2.52 to play after the beautiful 48 yard no return punt. The punt travels 47 yards. Nightly on Fox Sports Live. Joey J. on right and Dan O'Toole along with Donovan McNabb, Andy Roddick, Carissa Thompson as they bring you all the scores, news, and highlights you need. Catch Fox Sports Live nightly over on Fox Sports 1. 45-10 here. Oh, 
Sorry to hit on the handoff. For FAU on the bottom of that pile is going to be Tony Moore. He is a junior from Tallahassee. Lawn Atlantic will drop to two and six. Get back in the Conference USA play next weekend. The first meeting ever between FAU and the Green Wave of Tulane. Hankers at a quarterback on the handoff for churning. 15 to the 17. The tackle by number 16, Javier Mitchell. Third down. Coming up. Third down six. That tried to set up a little screen, but Auburn would have nothing to do with that. And they'll force the punt with a minute 29. It was a miss block that time by the right tackle. They try to get out in front of that screen, but Mitchell blows it up in the backfield. Sean Kelly in punt formation. Juan Bray backpedaling to his 35. This one at the 42. They take us down to the 41. So Gus Malzahn will gather the combination of the second and third unit. They go out there and finish this one off here from the 41 yard line. First and 10 as Auburn just came out, Tim, and took this game right by the throat. Scored their first three possessions, dominating the line of scrimmage, and they really never looked back. And that was really the only opportunity that Florida Atlantic had in this football game is would Auburn come out flat after the big emotional win, after uh, the big victory at Texas A&M? How would they come out early in this game? And Auburn said, we're not having any of that. They came out scoring their first three possessions, and it was off to, off to the races after that. Number 42, Chandler And a rush on first down. Chandler Shakespeare, the ball carrier. Taking the play clock down to seven. To the 48. Shakespeare again, his second carry. Missouri has scored. Now the Gamecocks get it back over in Columbia. Gus Malzahn will head out toward the midfield, shake the hand of Carl Pellini, and we will call it a night here on the Plains. Number 11 Auburn goes to 7 and 1 as they defeat Florida Atlantic 45 to 10. We'll be back.